Hey, how y'all doing? This is Josh from Keep It Tech, and today I wanted to do a quick video and show you guys how to set up a DNS caching server. Now, DNS caching server is, I mean, it basically what it does is it resolves um, URLs to IP addresses. So, whenever you make a request in your browser for, let's say, Google.com, it'll query uh, DNS data that's out there. Um, you know, on the internet, on the web, at a, in other DNS servers, and find the IP address for Google.com, and then uh, route that back to your to your personal box uh, to render the website. Um, so, um, by setting up a caching server, um, I mean it's it's a good thing to have something like that. Um, uh, especially if you don't trust like your ISPs, DNS servers, or other public uh, DNS servers that you have no control over. And you know, nowadays, uh, ISPs, they got the right through, what was that, Congress passed a bill basically saying that um, they can collect your data for uh, uh, revenue, I mean, uh, for ads and all that type of stuff. Um, so they could sell your data to other companies. Uh, basically, you know, all the sites that you're querying, they use DNS information. They can see all the sites that you're query that you query if you use your, their DNS servers. So um, it's a good it's a good thing to have your own. Uh, and plus, you know, it's at your house. You can control it, um, uh, and it's in close proximity to your to your machines. So. Um, that that kind of increases well um, decreases the query time uh, DNS query times so it's that's another reason you want to have it so uh, let's go on and get started um, I already have the VM running with Ubuntu server um, 16.4 LTS uh, so we're gonna SSH into this box so it's uh, SSH and then the IP address to the server. So whatever that is. Uh, so mine is 192.168.10.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
case you guys don't know, access control list is basically um, it basically tells a script or a configuration file what users are authorized to use this this service. So we wanna we wanna define that in the configuration file, and by doing that, we add, add an access control list. So you wanna add that at the top, so we can add it into the options below. So uh, you can basically uh, name it ACL, and then you can name it whatever you want. So good clients, that's what I'll name it. Uh, just to make it simple. Uh, and what you wanna do is add those clients within here. So um, you wanna add the IP address to um, your network, your network IP address. So the the network that you that you your local network that you work with. So 192.168.10.0 is mine. That's my network, uh, and it's also uh, 24 with subnet max. Um, and so that's a good client. And now we want to add uh, some defaults. We can add localhost, which will always be which is the computer itself, the server itself, so local host. And then local net is a good one to add as well because if uh, it doesn't catch everything on the network, on that network address above, then you'll catch everything on the local nets. So, there we go. So, good to go net. So now we have our access control list. So we wanna specify that down in the options to use that, that uh, good client. Uh, access control is so let's go down in here under the options block and add a few lines and we can start right here um, and we want to make this thing recursive sorry I have my caps lock on so recursive so recursion yes colon um, and then we also want to add uh, allow query. And we're gonna add we're gonna add our access control list right here. So uh, good clients. Let me call it. Which is basically that name that we named, gave it above. Like I said, you can name up here whatever you want. It could be. Um, uh, cat group or whatever whatever the hell it is uh, and then you just have to specify that name down here so that's basically it so we explicitly turn on recursion um, and we configure the allow parameter to uh, use the access controller specifications so now we're done we can uh, actually save this file so the way you save in nano is control x uh, and it says save modified data or buffer that's what it says so you just hit yes and it'll uh, write the changes to that file and then press enter at that point and get to go so and I also forgot one big thing that you should always do when modifying configuration files before you open it up and exchange it you want to make um, and change it you want to make sure you have a backup of it so I should have started with sudo uh, copy um, named config and just created a backup of it um, but we only made some small changes and we know what changes we made so we can go in and remove them if need be uh, if something breaks so and start back from fresh uh, but this if this was a big configuration file you definitely want to do that you want to have a backup because sometimes you can go through and change something and you don't have a clue where you made that change at it's very hard to find it especially when it's a long a long configuration file so you want to make sure you have a backup so you can just copy that backup back in place and the server will be back up and running uh, where it was before you made those changes so now that we have our configuration done it's good to go um, we want to test our configuration before we restart the server or restart that service and so it'll start working. The way you do that is type in sudo uh, named uh, dash check 
config bam and if it doesn't show any issue if if it's an error it'll show up here it'll show like a line number and wherever the error is in the configuration file so it's all good to go so now we can restart the server well restart that service so the command to do that uh, is sudo uh, system ctl uh, restart uh, and then bind nine bam and so it's restarted that service and our configuration uh, is taken in effect so uh, another thing which I'm not going to show you because I don't have the firewall actually running on the server it's in a closed network so um, I don't have a firewall on this thing but you want to uh, open up the firewall uh, open up a open up a port for the firewall um, or a rule in the uh, firewall and the way you do that is sudo ufw which is the uh, universal firewall whatever whatever that program is that was built in and, and that's a built-in program that's built in you want to um, install that allow and then you want to add by nine and that's just the application and it will automatically open the ports that it needs to open on the firewall if the firewall is running um, and actually you can do that now and then start the firewall but I'm not gonna go into that because that's a whole nother video that I want to do um, on managing the firewall um, and so that's pretty much it so now we want to we want to test this thing uh, and the way to test it we want to configure configure us a, a client and route it through this server the way to do that in Linux is to just change the resolve.config file so we go sudo nano uh, etsy uh, resolve.conf Enter uh, and let's come in out this um, name server and add us another one. So name server. Make sure we spell that right. Uh, and then the IP address to that server, which is 192.168.10.119. And uh, let's just check and make sure I spelled everything correctly, and you're good to go. So. Um, Control X, yes, we'll save that. So now we wanna um, run a quick ping test. This is the, the start of the process of testing it. So uh, let's just ping um, uh, one time. So the dash C and one, it'll ping the computer one time or the server one time uh, that you, you access to. So, uh, and then that's it. Google.com, press enter. And we, uh, it, it worked. So one packet transmitted, one packet received. So no packets lost. So that's a good, that's a good ping. Now we want to um, do some in-depth uh, uh, checking. So let's go, uh, let's clear this out so we can properly see what's going on. So um, you want to run a dig, the dig command. So dig is a little bit more in depth of uh, of uh, checking uh, what you're trying to. Um, it'll it'll return the A record and all that. It, it just returns more information. So uh, just hit dig and then let's use uh, keep it techie. Keep it techie So we run the dig on that. So press enter and then we'll go through and find that that information and what we want to look at is how long it actually took to take it the query time was 819 milliseconds and we also found out what the IP address is to my server so please don't bang on that uh, I don't think HostGator will like that um, but anyway um, so the query time was 819 milliseconds. So that's pretty good. And what the caching server does is once it's made that that um, that check and that query and found out what the actual IP address is for it and all that, it stores it. So the next time you actually run, let's say the dig command again, 
you'll see that it takes less time. See, it took zero milliseconds because it's coming from the server now because it's cached uh, on the server. So that lets you know the caching thing worked, the caching option worked that we set up. So the time that it took to actually query that. And as you can see, as you go through and start querying sites, um, uh, you'll see you'll see it get quicker and quicker. So let's dig aol.com uh, let's just check that all right and let's run it again Man, see it's cash now so now we want to do a, a reverse uh, check so um since i know what my it was my ip address there we go my ip address to my website so let's dig the ip address and do it it's basically a reverse uh just to do a little bit more checking. Um, so dig dash x, which lets you know it's an IP address that you're checking. Um, type that in, put the IP address in, press enter, and it should return the URL somewhere in here, or just some more information. Got the answer, the header. But anyway, it did the reverse, and as you can see, it took 752 milliseconds. But if you run it again, it'll see it'll drop down. It's cash now. So um, that's pretty much it for today's video. If you uh, like this content, please uh, you know give the video a thumbs up, comment. You know, the purpose of these videos is to you know uh, bring more new users to the Linux community. Because uh, I want to get more people into Linux and show people how cool it is and why I like it. So, um, I mean, if you guys enjoyed it, just like it, share it, you know, and subscribe to my channel. And, of course, you already know, keep it techie.